John Reed, the Pelicans beat writer for the New Orleans Times Picayune and NOLA.com, joining us live from New Orleans. John, why is Jimmer Fredette a good fit for that team? Well, this team needs shooting. I mean, when they they lost Anthony Morrow, he served in that role last season, and he um, he opted out of his contract to um, become an unrestricted free agent, and he moved on to Oklahoma City. So they needed a a, a, um, a guy who could get three point shots and 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 score from that distance, and um, they looked upon Jimmy Jameer to do that, and. Um, I think it's a, a good a good move for the Pelicans. I think that he's a player who, um, you know, I mean, I, I think more of it has been that he hasn't really had and received the opportunity for for minutes. I mean, extended minutes, that is. And I think that, um, you know, coming here, I think he has a lot to prove. I think he has a um, opportunity to um, to showcase that three point shooting with this. Um, team and and I think Monty Williams will give him that opportunity here in New Orleans. Okay, before we uh, talk more about Jimmer, we've had a discussion about uh, how a local would actually say New Orleans. Is it Nolens? What are we talking about here, John? Uh, say New Orleans. Just <laughs> not I, New Orleans. I, I, yeah, not what New Orleans. Is incorrect I know that. Is New Orleans. <laughs> I, like if you combine the two, what what's what what are you what are you saying? How is it pronounced? Like if you combine New, New, New Orleans, say not like. New Orleans, well, New Orleans. What are we talking? We've well, debated this today. Well, for the sake who who um, is from here, the, New Orleans is what the tourists say, and New Orleans is what they oh. want, and New Orleans is not. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's 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 not um, that's not the way they want you to say the name here. That's like that's like <laughs> Oregon and Oregon. It's Oregon, but people back east say. Uh, Hey, we, appre- we appreciate the clarification, John. Now that you've answered the hot topic question, let's continue <laughs> on with Jimmer Fredette here. You mentioned that he, he didn't have much of an opportunity with, with minutes with the Kings and the Bulls, and that's been a very frustrating thing for BYU fans across BYU Sports Nation to watch. How many minutes do you anticipate that Jimmer could play per game with New Orleans? I know Anthony Morrow played 18 minutes per game last year. Do you see Jimmer filling that role and, and playing that number of minutes? Well, he's as productive as Anthony Morrow was here. I I feel that he would probably be in that 15 to 18-minute range. I mean, this team has a problem with scoring. It's been an issue here for like the last three seasons. I mean, they are stacked at the guard position, but they don't really have a lot of stretch guys who can make the three-point shot. And and injuries, you know, Ryan Anderson is a guy that can – that can fill it up from the three-point line. But, I mean, he's coming off a serious injury, and he probably, I project, probably won't be back um, in a full playing status until probably December. So this team is looking for guys who can produce, and and Monty Williams need offensive um, guys who can put it in from from range. And um, I think that's where he's going to fill that role. And I see him... I don't see his role being any different than Anthony Morrow. I really don't. I think that's what they brought him in here for. The, the contracts are the same. The situations were the same. And I think he is the heir of replacement for Anthony Morrow, and I think he's going to fill the same role and, and, and play about the same amount of minutes if he's, you know, if he's productive. So you, do you have Drew Holiday penciled in as starter and then Jimmer as the backup point guard? Is that what you see? Yeah, but I think there's going to be variations of that. I think that uh, I think that they would have Jimmers at times playing off the ball to get up that shot. I, I, I think there's so many different combinations that Monty Williams can use. And uh, yeah, I think he will be the backup, but he's going to be competing for minutes at that backup guard spot with Austin Rivers. But uh, I, I just think that – I mean, I don't even think the Pelicans right now just see him as a, as, as just that designation of a, of a backup point guard. I think they see him as a, as a backcourt player who, who fill that role in, in, in getting them shots. They're not looking for him to be a playmaker. They're looking for him to be a scorer. And I think that's the main reason why they brought him in here. John Reed, New Orleans Pelicans beat writer for the Times-Picayune, joining us live on BYU Sports Nation. John, you were there the last time Jimmer played in New Orleans, his final college game in the NCAA tournament in the Sweet 16. 
What do you recall from Jimmer Mania in the NCAA tournament? <laughs> well, I was amazed just to see the, the fan reaction. I mean, I, I, I covered that um, NCAA tournament here, and uh, I mean, I saw signs, I, I, I saw shirts with his name on it, and then I watched him play, and I mean, it was just amazing the, the way he could shoot that basketball. And I can understand why the fans at BYU was 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 you know amazed by his abilities and uh, I, I mean I just it was it, you know it was something that uh, memorable for me and uh, and and I think he's gonna have I think he has sort of this charisma and uh, and I think one of his impact is that he. Um, he resonates with the fans. I, I think fans don't see him as a as a guy who who's like unreachable. Unreachable. I think he's a guy that uh, does a lot in in, in community work and, and different things like that. And I, and I think he, um, you know, looking over his career, knowing that um, the beat right out there in Sacramento, and I, I think um, you know his his persona. I mean, I, I think people a little surprised that he hadn't really produced to that level that he did in college when he led the nation in scoring as a senior. But I, I really feel that uh, people are waiting for him to have a situation that's ideal for him, and I think that's what he's been waiting for. But, yeah, he's, he seems to be a, 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 a got, got a lot of charisma, and, and, and I think fans – and I think that fan base that he had in college, I think they're waiting for him to, to, to have this breakout season in the NBA finally for a change. What's the biggest question mark about Jimmer Fredette, John? I think the biggest question mark is um, – is can he, you know? I mean, it's always been: is he quick enough? Can he shoot over taller guards? And um, and can he do it? I mean, it just seems like something has not worked for him in the NBA. I mean, I, I feel that anybody. I mean, what he averaged twenty eight point five points in his senior year. He did it under pressure of, um, you know, that yeah, everybody knew that he was the guy on the court that's going to score the ball. And I think that he's been in situations in the NBA where it, it just wasn't, didn't appear to be the right fit. And um, I think that, um, I think another factor with him is his confidence. I mean, has it, you know, when you look over being a, a high pick that he was in 2011 and really hadn't seen that success, you know, what is his confidence level? But um, I don't think you could really change um, a, a, a player like that who, who had that much success as a shooter. I think once a shooter, always a shooter. And I think that um, – I think a lot of eyes are going to be on him when this move here to the Pelicans, and I think a question of how he handles that pressure. I think there's going to be pressure on Jimmer to really come in here, and it could be his last opportunity too. That um, you know this would be his third team, and um, you know if it doesn't work here, it, it, I mean it might be a situation that it won't work. But uh, I, I think that. Um, you know, I think I, I think that the Pelicans are going to work with him to um, to 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 make sure that what his strengths are, they're going to utilize them, and um, and I think they're going to give him every opportunity possible to to be what the expectations were for him when he first came into the league. John Reed with us, New Orleans Pelicans beat writer for the New Orleans Times Picayune. We appreciate the insight into the Jimmer for Debt situation. And uh, I'm, I'm excited and anticipate uh, what that feeling would be like the first time Jimmer knocks down one of those 28 foot three pointers and, and how the fans go nuts. Well, if he does that here, he'll be a very loved basketball player in New Orleans <laughs> if he can knock them shots down like he did at BYU. <laughs> Thanks for the time, John. Nah, no problem.